Hello friends and welcome to Figure Study, where I'm taking a look at Generation Select's Rotor Storm. I can't really explain why I have this, aside from the fact that Spinister is a fantastic figure and the colors on Rotor Storm were so terrible that I absolutely loved them. I have no attachment to Rotor Storm. I mean, I have no attachment to Spinister either, but Rotor Storm in particular, I know Jack about this char character, the original figure, anything like that. I looked up old pictures to kind of get a feel for what they did with the deco, which we'll see more of in robot mode. But yeah, aside from like some of the colors here and there, this is, it's just a Siege Spinister with this going on. For as much as I loved Spinister for having a ridiculous color scheme, Rotor Storm's color scheme is so far beyond that level of ridiculous. And I absolutely love it. There's no new molding from what I've been able to tell with regards to uh, the helicopter mode. It's more the uh, the robot mode where there's a little bit of difference, but the helicopters functionally mold-wise are the same. To the point where if I bring in Spinister, which I've attached a couple of Astro Train's guns to him because I just thought he looked better with more guns. You can see they are the same helicopter. Even their little side guns are the same but the color scheme is very different and it's funny how rotor storm <laughs> with all that's going on here actually makes spinister look reserved <laughs> in his color palette kind of wild but we'll take a look at them more together in a little bit i believe it's been a little while but i'm pretty sure i remember spinister being one of my favorites or if not my favorites then at least an honorable mention for uh, top figures of 2019 this color scheme goes so far beyond that, I just love it. Powder blue with the bubblegum pink, and then this kind of weirdly dark gray and blue with the silver accents, and this minty green right there for some reason. And then the bright silver for the cockpit section a little bit back here, along with more of that bubblegum pink. And then the, it's dark, but I think that's also pink, the, uh, the cockpit windows. It's such a fantastic color scheme. It's completely ridiculous, but it's utterly fantastic. It's actually distributed a little bit differently than it was on Spinister too. I'll grab Spinister to show in a second, but uh, this just looks great. I love the helicopter. It's even got like a pink landing gear. That's so ridiculous. I love it. And it's a really solid shape for a helicopter, especially when you attach the guns on the uh, little winglets there. One thing that Rotorstorm has going for him that Spinister desperately needed is they painted the barrels of the guns yellow. And it seems like such a small thing, but it goes such a long way to making these feel less asymmetrical. Clearly, they are not molded the same, but when you look at those guns on Spinister, it's like blue and then purple, and they just don't work. And this makes me want to grab Spinister and paint the barrels on these guns as well to make them, they'll probably do like a gunmetal or something like that, but just paint them so that they kind of match a little bit better too, because it just looks so much better. And again, looking at the way that the color's done, I'm just going to focus on the helicopter-specific stuff. This little detail up here is actually painted a little bit differently. It's The molding is still the same, but it kind of brought these edges out a bit and left this area unpainted, whereas on Spinister, that bit in the middle is painted, but this doesn't go out as far. And then for the cockpits, clearly Rotorstorm has this really nice silver painted over the uh, top portion of the cockpit. Whereas Spinister is kind of this uh, bluish color throughout with certain details like along the sides here picked out in that gunmetal color. Rotorstorm does not have those details picked out, but hardly need to have them with this giant bit of silver right on top there. I think I actually like Rotorstorm even more because of how absurd his colors are. Anyway, with all of this talk of ridiculous helicopter color schemes out of the way, let's do size comparisons. Here he is with the standard deluxe squad, and you know, he's a deluxe, so he's about that size. The fact that the helicopter tail kind of stretches out makes him a bit longer, but yeah, I feel like proportionally he's about the same. Here he is once more with Spinister, but without the extra guns on, so you can kind of get a better idea how the color distribution is handled a little bit differently here and also how wildly different the color palettes are. And here he is with the duct tank. Okay, time to turn Rotor Storm into a robot. The transformation is exactly the same as Spinister, but I do want to say, after watching Thu's video, 
I never realized it either until watching his video, but apparently you are actually supposed to rotate the hip joint, like the forward-backward hip joint, upside down to get this portion to settle in a lot better. That little bit is going to be a little different than what we saw in the spinister video, but that's just because it's a step that I didn't realize was kind of necessary. So yeah, you'll just see something slightly different. Anyway, to the robot mode. And here we have Generation Select's Rotor Storm in his robot mode, and this also looks utterly fantastic. Again, it's just tons of that powder blue, bubblegum pink, the darker blue, the darker gray, and then silver, and it looks so good. I kind of, I just kind of wish that he had a color on his head that did not match the rest of the figure, because it's the same colors everywhere, whereas Spinister has like two different colors on his head that doesn't really, well, three actually. His entire head does not match the rest of his body. It's okay, Rotorstorm still looks cool, and I like the fact that they gave him a new head. And the colors here work so well. Looking at the original figure, I realized that uh, he does not transform at all like Spinister. He doesn't have the helicopter cockpit legs, or leg, but the helicopter cockpit is part of his chest, and that's why his chest is so silver and pink, because it's meant to evoke the helicopter cockpit of the original toy. The colors here are so great, the breakup is great, with like a little bit of light blue and dark blue in the feet, that silver and translucent pink in the shins, the dark gray in the thighs, the light blue in the waist section and the torso and the shoulders, silver accents, the pink accents, pink accents here, the dark gray, the dark blue, the pink for the hands. He has pink hands, that's so great. <laughs> and they even have some of this dark blue color kind of going up in strips on the sides of the shoulders, which look really good. And along the back you get a lot more of that gray, which is fine. And then that kind of minty green, the big pink rotors and all that, way more of that blue. He looks really, really good. I really like the colors on this guy. I do kind of feel like maybe they should have gone even further with it and included maybe some more of that minty green somewhere else, but it's okay. Detail-wise, it's the same exact molding all the way up until we get to the head as Spinister. It's just the colors are distributed differently. He's got these light blue sections on his toes, but this little bit kind of comes out further, whereas on Spinister it's just these vents that are painted like a gunmetal gray. Again, the cockpit sections are painted in silver. The tops of the cockpits are painted in silver. Nothing going on in the thighs, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's okay. Like, there's so much else going on elsewhere, I feel like it's, it's passable, but uh, they do look a little plain compared to the rest of his body. And then in the midsection, again, there's that kind of meant to evoke a helicopter cockpit kind of pattern that they painted in there. And the arms are Spinister's arms, with the uh, difference being the shoulder detailing there. There's no siege gunk on his forearms or thighs, thankfully. He does have Autobot logos inside his uh, shoulder details, and also those are painted, whereas on Spinister they are not. And then we come to that head, which is definitely not Spinister's head, and I'm glad it's not. I saw the uh, initial product shots just showed Spinister's head in a different color scheme, and that would have been okay, but I do like that they ended up doing a completely different head for this guy. It really helps to sell the whole him being a different character thing. I'm not familiar with Rotorstorm as a character or a toy, as I said, but I really like this head sculpt. There's something kind of fun about the angles that they used on the helmet, the sort of blockiness. He's got that kind of humanish looking silver face, but then the bright pink sunglasses slash visor. It's, it's a really nice look. As I said before though, my one gripe with regards to that would be I just kind of wish that they brought in maybe one color that was not anywhere else on the figure for the head, just to kind of set it apart just a little bit more. Though they did bring in yellow on the guns, which definitely adds to him. And you can peg them into his forearms as you do with Spinister. And I mean, it's, he's the same figure, so you can peg them in the same regardless. 
What I actually like to do with Rotor Storm is peg the, uh, I'll do it around this way, peg the guns into his shoulders to give him kind of like gun shoulder spikes, which is silly, but it's an inherently silly figure, so you can do what you want with it. But I find that to be amusing. Let's move him off to the side and bring in some more comparisons. Here he is with the standard deluxe squad, and he's, just like Spinister, very tall for a modern deluxe, and I'm okay with that. I don't mind there being some wiggle room in the heights of the current deluxes, because, as many people have said, it's a price point. It's not a size class anymore. Here he is with his not-quite-twin Spinister, and you can see again how they're the same mold with a different head and just some different paint, different color scheme, but like it really really sells the whole being a different character thing. Especially putting the guns in different positions. I feel like that also helps to change the silhouette a little bit more dramatically, so then you've got a different silhouette in addition to a very different color scheme. And you can also see that uh, there's a lot more going on with Rotor Storm, which I believe is because he's a Generation Selects figure. I think that's just kind of par for the course for them, but you can see what I was talking about with uh, Spinister's toes versus Rotor Storm's toes, and again, you've got the really bright silver for the shins and not anything... I mean, it's it's all painted, but like the gunmetal stuff that's painted on the sides is on the sides. It's not as overt on Spinister. And looking at them side by side, it's like, yeah, I was saying that Rotor Storm's thighs are a little bit plain looking compared to everything else, but then looking at Spinister, it's like he's basically just wearing bell-bottom jeans, which is fine. It's a neat look, but the color breakup here is definitely better than on Spinister. And the torso deco is very different with Rotor Storm having that sort of faux cockpit design painted on and Spinister having painted details to bring out specific details in just a few areas kind of spread around his chest. Spinister's arms, aside from the siege gunk, are not painted and they're all pretty much the same shade of purple. Maybe this purple's slightly different, but it's just purple all the way down with those arms and then the gray fists, which, again, fine, but I like the kind of over-the-top pink and light blue that's going on in Rotor Storm's arms. And then the heads are totally different. But here you can kind of see what I'm talking about with regards to Spinister and how he's got that striking black and turquoise with yellow eyes head going on, which works extremely well for his slightly more muted color scheme when compared to Rotor Storm. I don't know, I just, I feel like maybe if they brought some of that yellow into Rotor Storm's face it would work better, but then I'm sure this is homaging the original toy or character, so they probably didn't want to add a ton of new color there that wasn't there before. It's what we got. But looking at these two side by side, I really appreciate just how, well, one, just how amazing this mold is, and two, just how weirdly versatile it is with a completely different color palette and a different head. And here he is with the duck tank. You know, normally I'd think purple and yellow would be an extremely garish color combination, but when you see it next to this guy, not so much. But that is going to do it for Generation Select's Rotor Storm. As I said, same exact figure as Spinister, but Spinister is a fantastic figure. And this color scheme is... I can't say enough how much I like this completely ridiculous color scheme. It is fantastic and I'm extremely glad they did this. Even though I don't know a dang thing about the original toy or the character, this is just fun. But anyway, that is gonna do it for Rotor Storm and for me. What do you all think of this guy? Or how this guy compares to Spinister? Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. And remember, art is more than meets the eye. In this case, it would probably qualify as pop art.